Let's tame that inbox, well, as much as we can, right? So timestamps below along with some other helpful videos to getting organized with your files and crushing your day. So when it comes to email, the main problem is the fear of missing out, right? Because we get too many of those emails that we're afraid that we might miss something if we don't read them. And then we get pulled down some sort of rabbit hole and we never actually look at the emails that are actually important to us. So the first step is to figure out who you're receiving emails from right now that is most important to your business or career and then pretty much ignore the rest. Now, before we get into filters and automations and all that fun, fancy stuff, we of course want to have a list of the actual real world people we need to read the emails from, right? And that way we can actually start to create buckets. So you know how in Gmail you have those different tabs at the top? Well, here are how I like to organize my emails before we get into automations and filters. So in the priority tab, I like putting real humans only. These are the people that are actually important to my business. Then number two, social. These are ongoing conversations. So whereas the primary tab is new people coming in, the social is where I put all the conversations that are already going back and forth. And so that way I know if I need to follow up with someone or I'm waiting on a response from someone, that's the part of my inbox that I check. And don't worry, we'll get to how to automate the filters in a moment and all of the labels that you can use to really get OCD. But when you're just getting started, just view all of those tabs as buckets and get your emails in the right place. Get the noise out of the way, which speaking of noise is going to be number three, promotions, pretty much everything else and robots. So anything that wasn't set by a real human being or a software or service that I'm paying for or care about goes into promotions. Now, when it comes to updates, I like having things like receipts and bank statements and any sort of administrative information you have to save for record purposes to go there. And then finally, I like to use forms for family, friends, and you know the silly stuff people send, send you in your personal life, right? So that's what I recommend doing when you first get started organizing your inbox. Don't try and make filters. Don't try and get fancy with labels. Just go ahead and create five big buckets and move emails to where they're supposed to go. And the great advantage of this is when you click and drag an email to a, another tab, there's going to be a message at the bottom that pops up and it asks, do you want to move all messages from this person to this tab? And then you click yes or okay. And once you do, Gmail in the future will automatically start filtering those for you. And it's a very, very quick way to start filtering out all of that noise and making sure your primary inbox only shows those emails that actually matter. So once you've gone through this step, you're ready to start creating some automatic filters using labels. And so think of this as creating a folder hierarchy for all of your emails. Now on the left-hand side here, you can see an example of how I like to set up my labels and filters. And so I have a label called admin and I put all of the legal tra travel information and accounting documents in this particular label. And then you can also make these sub labels. So legal, travel info and accounting are sub labels. Then I recommend having a label for team. I'll get to why there's only one and there's no sub labels in the next section. And then of course, on the way down, I have some labels for sales funnels, like new prospects, potential clients coming in, current clients, and of course, products. And finally at the bottom, I have something called swipe and personal. So all the personal emails I get, get labeled as personal and anything under the sun that pretty much is not sent by a real human being. That is a marketing message I put under swipe file. So let's go ahead and go through how you can actually set these labels up and then have emails automatically labeled as they come into your inbox. So we'll go ahead and start with a example inbox here. Let's say I have a couple of messages and the first one here is from a team member. So all you have to do is click on it and then you can come up here to the three little dots, click on the three little dots and click filter messages like these. So I'll click on that and it will have the email there. So make sure the email actually shows up. Sometimes there's gonna be some random, <laughs> it'll say list and a bunch of random characters because it's coming from an automated system. So just make sure that you have a real email here. So we'll go ahead and click on create filter and then we can apply lots of different options, but the one we care about is going to be apply the label. So we'll go ahead and click that. We'll click the drop down menu here. And because this is a new demo account, we don't have any labels yet. So we'll just go ahead and click on new label here. 
and then we can go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call this team because this is a team member sending me an email. And this way, when this team member sends me an email in the future, I, it, Gmail, I, I'll know it's a team member because Gmail will automatically give it a tag and then we can give it a custom color as well. So we'll go ahead and name it team. We won't nest it under a label. You can get really, really OCD here. And we'll go ahead and click on create. You can also apply to matching conversations. This, these are conversations that have happened in the past. Now, of course, if you do anything like skip the inbox and archive, you don't wanna check this because then you're gonna archive a bunch of messages you may or may not have already read. So we'll go and click on create filter here. And now you'll see that there is a little box that pops up that says team, but it's kind of hard to read. And if we come over here, we can actually click three little dots when we hover over team, and then we can change the label color to something brighter so we actually can see it. And now we're going to change it to orange. So now every time I email myself about a project from this particular email, the team label is going to be applied to it and that way, when it hits the inbox, it's really easy to see, oh, that's team, that means I should take care of something. Now, another common important type of email we receive is customers, of course, right? So let's go ahead and go through this process one more time for customers. So let's go ahead and say, this is a customer emailing us. Obviously, it's all my name because I'm doing this as a demo, but yours will have real people, right? So we'll go ahead and click on this. And this is someone who can't log in. All right, so we'll click the three little dots again, create filter messages, filter messages like these. Of course, the from will pop up and we'll go ahead and click on create filter. Oh, quick aside, you can actually include subjects as well. So I like doing this with bank statements because banks normally and receipts sometimes, especially when you order from the same sites over and over again, they'll use the same subject, especially, and PayPal as well. I'm talking over myself. I should just move on. They, you can, filter by the subject as well. So if you have a vendor or person who sends you lots of emails and you don't want to filter them all the same way, you can use the subject line. That was a much shorter and easier way to say that. All right, let's just continue, create the filter. This time I'm going to click skip inbox, apply, and also apply to matching conversations. And this doesn't mean that we're going to auto archive every customer email, this is just example purposes, right? So we'll go ahead and check those boxes. And then in the drop down menu, we're going to create a new label. We'll just call this customer. And then we'll go ahead and click on create. And then we can create that filter. And now all the emails that came from that particular person have instantly disappeared because we clicked auto archive and we selected that they should be applied to the previous emails. So that's why it's really important that when you're creating your filters that you really think about clicking that last box because some important things might accidentally be archived. So all we need to do is come over here to customer again. We're going to change the label to red. So it's really clear for us to know that this is a customer. And then in the future, if we hadn't clicked auto archive, they would get a red label, just like we have team here. So we can easily see, hey, that's a customer. We should probably go ahead and make sure that they're happy and not upset, like they can't access the product they just purchased, right? And that's all there is to it to filters. Now, it's really important that you don't spend like a whole day trying to make filters the first time around. Definitely start with prioritizing your emails, just dropping them into those different buckets using the tabs at the top. And then in the future, as you go through your emails, go ahead and every time you check your inbox, maybe go ahead and make another two or three filters, right? But definitely don't try and block out this giant chunk of time to organize all your emails because you're you're not gonna feel all that great or productive afterwards. And more emails just keep coming in. They just don't stop. So speaking of emails not stopping, now that we have a very basic system, it's time to come up with a response plan for how to handle things when emails actually come in on a daily basis to make sure that inboxes don't take over our entire workday. And the best way to ensure email stays a productive part of your day and other people's to-do lists don't wind up being your to-do list as well is to schedule your communication time. This is something that actually comes out of some of our time blocking strategies. So I'll link up in the cards in the description to a full-blown video 
video on time blocking and calendar blocking and how you can really be productive with your day. But long story short, you want to limit your inbox time to three distinct parts of the day. And if you have someone who you need to communicate with more than three times a day, then you'll want to look for a different channel to move that communication into, like your project manager, for example, so that you are disconnecting those really important conversations from the noise that is email. And so I highly recommend no more than three times a day and actually schedule it out on your calendar. And then once you're in your inbox, you want to set a priority similar to what you did in step one, where you went ahead and figured out who are the actual important people to my career and business right now and started putting them in different buckets. As you scan your new emails, you want to have a priority of who you're looking for and who you're going to reply to first, because there's almost always going to be emails that you just can't get to. And so you want to have some sort of list. Here's just an example. Yours doesn't have to be the same, but you do want to have some sort of list of priorities going in so you don't get sucked into some other rabbit hole or get sidetracked with what's actually important. And finally, with your response plan, if it's going to take you more than two to five minutes to reply to an email, or if the email represents a task, I highly recommend taking that email and pushing it over to your project manager. Now, we use Basecamp. I've also used Asana in the past. Most project managers allow you to forward emails in, and that way you turn the email into an actual task, because the last thing we want to do is use our inbox as a to-do to -do list. That is definitely not what we want to do. So if it's going to take you longer than two to five minutes to reply, or it represents an actual project or task that will take a significant amount of time, then go ahead and forward that into your task manager. And then when you're doing your task plan for the day, or you're figuring out what to work on next, it's going to be next to all of your other tasks and it's going to help you make sure that you give priority to the right thing as opposed to you spend all day on these emails and then you go to your project manager and go, oh, wait, uh, I, was, I, was, I was supposed to work on that today, not, not all of this, right? You want it all in one place. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some ideas on how you can be more productive with your inbox and hopefully tame the just absolute mess that emails seem to continually be. So hit that like button, subscribe for more productivity guides just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.